The Nigerian army has taken responsibility for Sunday's airstrike that left many villagers killed and several others injured at Tudumbiri village in Kaduna State. This development was confirmed by Samuel Aruan, the Cardinal State Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs at the end of an emergency security meeting on Monday. The Cardinal State Government convened an emergency security meeting chaired by Deputy Governor Dr. Adiza Balarabe to discuss the incident. Let's take a listen. In the meeting, which was presided by Her Excellency, the Deputy Governor, Dr. Hadiza Sabwa uh, Balarebi, which had in attendance heads of security agencies, religious and traditional uh, leaders. The Nigerian Army explained the circumstances which led to the unfortunate and unintended uh, attack. The GOC-1 Division, uh, Nigerian Army, Major General V. Okoro explained that the Nigerian Army was on a routine mission against terrorists, but uh, unfortunately, uh, some members of the Tudumbiri uh, community uh, were, uh, affect, uh, were affected. Uh, search and rescue efforts are still ongoing as dozens of things have been evacuated to Barrow Adiko Teaching Hospital by... Joining us live is Roy Okidebe, security consultant. Roy, good to have you on Plus Politics. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Would you want to give us uh, your understanding as a, as a professional in the sector of what may have happened or what could have happened? Uh, condolences, first of all, to, uh, to members of family and uh, uh, co-villagers and indeed the government of Kaduna State. Uh, but can we get an explanation of what may have happened? Okay, thank you for the opportunity. And um, I cannot give an explanation for what has happened. I can give an analysis. Because um, the military has already come out to respond and um, they have taken responsibility for the unfortunate calamity. But um, going from my experience as a military veteran, I have seen that... Um, the best and first thing to do is investigation. Now, I would like to draw our thoughts because I'm happy with the current um, chief of defense staff with what he's doing so far for his strategic um, activities to upgrade intervention of um, our insecurity parameters. I, I know that um, there are certain discussions that will be going on in different areas right now and then um, we need to look at a proper investigation a proper investigation should and would carry us to different fora of um, understanding now it is possible that um, we should be thinking of a um, proper investigation into the cause of the calamity if we have such happening, we must want to know, is it, a, is it an accident, an innocent accident, or it was an intentional act? Then we also want to know, is it a careless act, or it was um, an, in a, in an unavoidable situation? You know, so when you put all of those discussions in inside of the military intelligence system, you will be able to know what happened, why it happened, and why it should not happen again. Uh, in the first place, uh, getting the military to even own up is a pleasant surprise to somebody like me. Uh, ordinarily, uh, possible deniability would have been what one thought would have been the tradition of the military. But coming out to, to accept culpability, uh, that does not uh, discountenance the importance of uh, 
the investigative committee that you you are you are requesting for or suggesting, but to you, how does it sound that the military came out to own up for this? At, at least the army came out to own up for this even before an investigative uh, panel or committee has, has been set up. Um, like I told you earlier, I served in Kaduna from one mechanized infantry division for about nine years, um, from 1990 to 1999. And um, I was in the combat engineers unit, bomb disposal squad. And I know that um, in the course of going for my airborne for 794, I was opportune to fly over the the states and during our jumps and the the geographical spread of criminality and innocent citizens used to be very defined now you will know where criminals are you will know where citizens are and it was also possible then to be able to tell citizens to withdraw so that the military can come in and eliminate the, the criminals. Now, a lot of things happened in Nigeria that led to a breakdown of trust and understanding between the people and security agencies. So the people became um, spies for the criminals. The military themselves could not gain trust. The police could not gain trust and use these people as their open source intelligence um, method and channels, sorry. And um, this brought to the loo where the military need to covertly operate. And if you want to do that, you are scared of creating opportunities to have uh, casualties. So all of this backlog are some of the things that could not come to the public, you know, because the military could not openly reveal because you don't know where the criminals have their network to penetrate your activities, like those uh, ambushes that we have been seeing, where soldiers are killed, you know. So I believe that um, the government coming out to take ownership and the chief of defense staff and the minister, um, chief of army staff and all those military governments coming to take ownership is to create another line of trust and relationship building with the people. And I'm sure that um, this will in increase the opportunities to rout out all the criminal elements in the state and identify their actual spots of um, hideouts so that the military operations will be decisive. Now, we know that uh, sometimes collateral damages or collateral calamities like these uh, sometimes do happen. Uh, but whilst you were responding to the last uh, to the last question, you mentioned some very important uh, uh, some very important intelligent uh, intelligence uh, assets, uh, women as in human intelligence element asset, and OSINT, you know, open source intelligence that using telecoms and telecommunications equipment, basic phone. Uh, phone uh, messages. One wonders. Uh, unfortunately, you have served in the military before. Do our do our military agencies also function as we have? You know, we've read widely from the equivalents in other parts of the world. Um, if we look at the relationship between the military and opportunities for them to generate open source intelligence and human intelligence you will understand that there must be a center of collaboration between the immigration services the dss um, all other police um, special units you know that deal with uh, movement information on movement of persons and then um, persons of high interest you know so you will see that these collaborations are very, very sensitive. Because um, if you remember the case of Wadume, where there was break of communication and the military and the police had an altercation that was bloody. You know, if you remember 
There, there are other cases too where military convoys are ambushed. So sensitivity of um, information um, um, exchange has grown so thick. And then um, I want to tell you that um, use of technology should have been a, a, a strong advantage. But um, you, you remember recently where a, an airline that took off landed in, in, a, in a state where it was, it was not its destination. And that happened in Nigeria. So definitely the, the use of intelligence um, via telecommunications, um, via um, information technology, via um, cyber operational activities is also possibly um, handicapped by our abilities in Nigeria for, 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 for specific and um, our training curriculum abilities for our personnel. You know, so these are so many challenges that may call into our use of um, the web space, our lack of opportunity to have our own um, cyber operational basis, our data control incapacity for now. You know, all of those things we bottle up into handicapsy and vulnerabilities. The military um, is always very, very concerned about uh, protecting its personnel. Uh, and sometimes in the bid to do that, given what we have just portrayed now, uh, in the backdrop of the sensitivity of uh, information sharing and the fact that uh, some elements of community sometimes sometimes uh, uh, serve as uh, intelligence gathering uh, gathering agents for 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 rebels and uh, and uh, insurgents uh, inevitably in such an environment uh, mishaps like this. I, I'm choosing my words carefully because you can explain away the fact that 30 human lives, innocent lives, uh, have been lost. But inevitably, in the in the milieu of distrust, in the milieu of uh, paranoia that uh, one seems to have gleaned from your responses, it is almost uh, inevitable that this. This kind of mishaps may may, re may, may happen again. Uh, how would you respond to that? Um, in um, in operational environments, there are accidents. Now, the the casualty rate for accidents is um, usually reduced if there was proper incident and accident investigation. You know, so uh, one one challenge we have is our lack of closure, proper closure, and then uh, proper implementation uh, of resolutions. Now we quickly start to raise committees. The committees they go into investigation, and they get a a, a, a resolution. Now implementation becomes a problem. Now. So peradventure, let's use this scenario for an example. Peradventure, it was a technology glitch. And the, the committee now find out that, oh, great, let me give you one great, good example. During the time of the Kaduna train abduction, the minister, Amechi, came on TV and he said that the train was asked to run without fully implementing security deterrence um, recommendation. You know, so when I saw that, I, I was framed because we are quick to launch Nigeria Air, we are quick to launch a world project, we are quick to launch. We are not careful to implement safety and security measures. You know, that is why private security is not respected in Nigeria. If you look, right now we have the Association of Licensed Private Security in Nigeria. I'm a member, and I, I, I see the whole gamut of that association holding the embed of 
That's the security in Nigeria. And so many of us consult internationally. I'm in Texas right now. I'm talking with so many people and we are consulting on security. But will my country take from it? So if you look at the expectations that we should have, the, the opportunities to deter future occurrences, then we must investigate this. We must investigate those that happened before. We must put in measures to reduce to the barest minimum possibilities of reoccurrence. Once we can have possibilities of reoccurrence reduced, then we can look at human failure. Then we can look at upgrading the curriculum and opportunities of exposure for our personnel. Then we can look at possibility of criminal um, criminal, criminal intervention into the process and say, was it a was it a, a terrorist attempt attack? You know, so once we can dispel all of this, we put deterrence measures implementation. Then we will say that occurrence tomorrow is to the barest minimum. You don't seem to be, uh, you, you're very discreet about the way you're making the point, but any, any intelligent listener can glean from, from your remarks that you are not too optimistic that the right things are being done with a view to unraveling uh, what may have been the cause or causes. Of, uh, of this unfortunate mishap. And apart from that, uh, one is sitting there thinking with defense, uh, taking the larger chunk of uh, budgets in, in recent times. Uh, in fact, the newly proposed uh, budget, defense comes top. So, uh, are we just sometimes throwing lousy money at some of these things without the requisite cultural change, attitudinal change, knowledge change, operational change that are imperative for us to see a positive, a positive uh, movement of the da? You, uh, let me appreciate you. <laughs> I can see very well that um, you have the spirit of discernment, especially professional security spirit of discernment. Now, there are things that we cannot say on air, especially with our current level of training and um, liaison capabilities. Um, but one thing is sure, and I appreciate your, your last question. You know, the defense budget that we talk about, most times, if it is deployed towards procurement and equipment, it's also usually a failure, you know, because I, I used to tell people, if you come to America here now, you will see that the, the motivation of the troops, the welfare of the troops, and um, the other paraphernalia like health, education for their kids, um, accommodation, and the care for veterans when you exit you know those are the people that are going to hold the gun going to fly the jet fighter going to operate the drones going to about military so if you look at your defense budget and you generate your priorities towards procurement 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 then you have already started to fail now let me come back to where I want to agree with you that I was trying to cut off some things. Let me open up some areas. Now, if you look at why will a, a military operation have civilian casualties? Why? Because there is the possibility and the reality that the criminal elements being sought after live within the, the civilian entities. They, 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 they operate, they hibernate, Cohabit, and if that is the case, do you deploy military? Because if you look oh, at okay, the we, are, we have to go now. We, we really have to go. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, quite an interesting Thank engagement. You. Looking forward to another opportunity with you. Uh, I, I think your intellectual persona, apart from your expertise, is very stimulating. Thank you. Thank you, sir.